this is a popular lens. The other day I was at an event taking photos whilst working alongside two friends that I studied with. Before the event took place, we just done that typical photographer thing where we talk about our kit and what we brought with us and I was uh, <laughs> I was telling them that uh, I brought my Helios 44-2 lens, it's like this old Russian lens from 50 years ago and then the next thing both of them had the exact same lens. It was really nice, it was like a really nice moment um, that we all had the same lens. This made me wonder what makes this lens so popular? Like many, this was my first vintage lens. It felt like it was built so well, with its all metal body. It even felt nicer than some other lenses that I own, and can be adapted to almost any camera, both mirrorless and traditional DSLRs. The image you get out of this lens is unreal. It is so soft and it takes away that over-sharpened digital look. And it also had, drum roll please, swirly bokeh and the swirly bokeh. Fun swirly bokeh? Yep swirly bokeh. But what does that mean? The word bokeh is used to describe out of focus points of light in the background. It comes from the Japanese word spelt boke, B-O-K-E, meaning he is. But the H was added in to help English speakers pronounce it correctly. Here's an example of traditional round bokeh. And here's the swirly bokeh from the Helios. I can see why people really admire this lens, as it can really enhance the image. The look was loved so much, it was even used in the car chase scene in the Batman. Yes, the Batman, a big Hollywood blockbuster. And the amazing thing about this lens is that it costs roughly £40, depending on the condition you buy on eBay. There are so many good things about this lens, but we have one problem. As it is about 50 years old, it is a manual focus lens. Getting used to manual focus does take time. There are some photos that I've taken where I thought they looked good in camera, but whenever I blew them up on my monitor, I had noticed that they were out of focus. My simple workaround for this solution is that I simply take more time in taking my photos, and when I do, they can be tack sharp. As a whole, buying a vintage lens was one of my best financial decisions in photography, and I can now say that this is one of my favorite lenses I also think buying cheap vintage lenses is a good way of working out what type of focal length suits you, but without forking out hundreds of pounds. Hello folks, that was really really fun. That was so so fun making that first YouTube video. Feedback would be appreciated, leave them in the comments below. Honestly, I had a blast making this. Thank you.